Hello friends and family and welcome to the Thursday, September 3rd <laughs> edition of our Boring Meditation Stuff, um, our talk about anxiety and meditation. Um, I've been noticing lately in my practice and particularly when I practice Anapana that um, that I end up often uh, too tense, you know, kind of clenched up. I'm going to focus really hard, <laughs> kind of. Um, the, the way little kids might try to meditate. Um, this overexertion is one end of the spectrum and underexertion where I'm not trying and I'm just letting my mind wander and whatever thoughts happen to come up I'm just watching them and I'm enjoying whatever is going on in my mind um, that's the other end of the spectrum that's total laziness um, sloth if you want um, there is an idea of a quote-unquote middle path. And the idea of the middle path, I think, is widely misinterpreted. Um, so for one thing, particularly in the West, but I mean in any westernized culture, so for the last decade in Bangalore, I would say Bangalore is a westernized culture um, for all intents and purposes. Um, people uh, are engaged in all the classical activities of Europeans <laughs> more than anything else, um, at least people my age. And there's an there's an idea that wherever the extremes are in the world at the moment that a less extreme version of that um, is middle path because total renunciation of drinking or smoking or um, these uh, other overindulgences that that sort of renunciation is for monks or for nuns or for you know the uh, samanas and sadhus you see walking the streets with no shoes um, this is a pretty gross misinterpretation um, the middle path in this context is between the two kind of boundary extremes, if you will. So the boundary extreme on one side is the same. Lots of drinking, lots of smoking, lots of indulgence, um, enjoying all the sensual pleasures of the world. But the extreme on the other side is not renunciation. The extreme on the other side is is penance, it's self-mortification, uh, it's self-harm. Um, and not in the modern sense where um, people will still engage in all of these sensual pleasures, but then go home and self-harm um, because of some uh, mental health issue. The self-harm here is the self-harm of religiosity, uh, the self-harm of, I want to get closer to God, I want to get closer to enlightenment by way of self-harm. Um, and this middle path says, both of these extreme options are incorrect. <laughs> You're not winning anything by overindulging in everything you can get your hands on, and you're also not winning, winning anything by torturing yourself to death. Um, there, there is 
a set of activities which can help you, um, and those involve peer observation, and that's in the middle. Um, so this is, this is one idea of the middle path, um, but a much more immediate, a much more accessible idea of the middle path would be within our practice. Um, within our practice, if you find yourself, like me, clenching up and, and oh, I'm focusing so hard, Arr, all my muscles are tight, um, that, is, uh, that is the same side, right, as the, uh, as the self-harm, the self-torture, um, the, the self-mutilation, torturing oneself to death. And if you find yourself falling asleep and just enjoying all your thoughts and, oh, my mind is expanding, how cool, um, that is the self-indulgence side of the equation. This is the, um, the sort of laziness which leads us to pursue nothing but sensual pleasures. However, <laughs> it is very important to understand that ultimately none of these things are what is meant by the middle path. These are components, it's certainly helpful to draw out a middle path and say, ah, yes, it's kind of um, a sensible uh, trajectory between these two extreme points. But what is meant by the middle path is um, probably not so one-dimensional. It's not just a left and a right, and somewhere in the center there's um, the right way to go. And it's probably not bound in two dimensions or three dimensions, or even in a way that you can really think about, draw, talk about, describe. Um, but the closest I've ever really been able to come in terms of constructing an image of what this middle path really looks like when you know that you're walking on it, as it were, is sort of like uh, barreling into the center of a black hole. It's not, it's not this balance of two extremes. It's kind of, you're moving lightning fast, laser fast toward something. It's not entirely clear what's at the end of the path. You just know that the path is very straight and very quick. Um, and it's kind of an indication that, oh, okay, I've, I've straightened out. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I drove into the ditch for a while and then I took a side road and now, oh, now I'm going really straight. And, um, and because I'm going straight, I'm going fast. Um, that explanation leaves a lot to be desired, I realize, but a concrete consequence might be that you sit down to meditate, you start paying attention to your breath, and you find for once that your attention is not wandering, you're not constantly obsessed about work, you're not constantly obsessed about your family, you're not constantly obsessed about tomorrow or next week or next year. You're just here with the breath, feeling it coming in, going out, passing over the tiny patch of skin under the nostrils, and your attention narrows on that and narrows on that, and all of a sudden the gong goes off. And an hour has gone by, two hours have gone by, three hours have gone by, your legs didn't cramp up, you didn't get wrapped up in your body 
for your thoughts or your emotions, um, time just kind of seemed to disappear because you were going fast. Um, this may not happen tomorrow, <laughs> um, but it is bound to happen at some point, uh, some points. And once it happens once, it won't necessarily happen again for a very long time. Um, but when you do have this experience, it's often a good indication that, oh, oh, this is interesting, this, this works. Um, but you'll have to experience that for yourself. Uh, this is again a long video. I keep making these too long, I'm sorry. Um, but I hope that you're all taking care of yourselves. I hope you're taking care of everyone around you. And I hope that you are not harming yourselves or overindulging during our time in the lockdown. All right, I will talk to you all tomorrow. Goodbye.